I'm Tim Sapomasan, I'm Race Discrimination Commissioner at the Australian Human Rights Commission. I believe in strong and effective laws against racial vilification, so I believe that the law as it currently stands should remain the same because we need to send a strong message about how racism is unacceptable in today's society. My name's Tim Wilson, I'm Australia's Human Rights Commissioner and I think the Racial Discrimination Act should be amended so that we preserve and protect the fundamental human right of freedom of speech, of equality before the law, while also making sure that we tackle racism within our community so that we have an open, pluralistic, liberal society. Well, my view is that language and leadership really matter when it concerns race. About 20% of Australians say that they've experienced racial hate talk of some kind in the past 12 months. And if you let people air grievances, prejudices in public, then it can encourage other people to believe that it's all right to vilify people in public. I think we saw an interesting case study in Cronulla in 2005. So I believe our laws should reflect our commitment to civility and tolerance in a multicultural society. The best way to tackle racism, homophobia, sexism within our community is for people to stand up and speak out against them, not to try and use law. And the current designed law does nothing to advance that. In fact, what it does do is say, we're gonna defer responsibility to the courts to try and resolve these issues. Well, the background to the laws is that there was a lot of public concern in the late 1980s and early 1990s about racial violence. So you had a Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody, a National Inquiry into Racist Violence, a report from the Australian Law Reform Commission, which all recommended that the law be changed to include protections against racial vilification. When it comes to the operation of the law, it's also important to understand that very few cases end up in court. You can't be prosecuted, you can't be convicted for breaching the law because it's a civil provision. So the law is an educative law. It has worked well, it's been interpreted fairly, and there's been widespread community support for it. In that respect, I don't see any good or compelling reason for us to change a law that works well. Some people say there's no need to change the law uh, because it's working well, but actually it's an argument for why the law should change. Their argument is based on the idea that things like offender insults are assessed on a relatively high bar and they're not just used for casual comments but that actually highlights how low it can be interpreted and why we need clarification to the law and to set a bar at the level where we all expect community standards to say that it's unacceptable to say comments in the public domain. Well, from a human rights perspective, freedom of speech is one of the most, if not the most, important human right. One of the big problems with the law at the moment is of course it can be used to silence people and to silence legitimate debate within the community. The assumption behind this law is that there is no criticism, legitimate criticism to be made of different ethnic communities. That simply isn't the case. As Human Rights Commissioner one of my jobs is to challenge homophobia that exists within the community and often that does exist very strongly in ethnic communities but because of the operations of this law in its current form, it has a chilling effect on my capacity to stand up against injustice. Well, I, un I understand that concern. It's important that we don't censor ideas unnecessarily. But the way that the courts work in interpreting the law is that they're bound by precedent. And courts have always held that you need to uh, cause serious and profound harms before you're captured by the law. It doesn't cover hurt feelings. It doesn't cover trivial slights. We are talking about things that go to the heart of someone's dignity. Well, defending free speech is always about defending the interests of the weak and the powerless because the rich and the powerful can always afford to buy media platforms. And if we limit free speech, they're the ones who win because they'll still be able to get their voice out. They'll still be able to take their issues through the courts in the same way that the weak and the powerless cannot. But we're also in an age where there's a huge number of platforms to hold established interests to account on the internet, through blogs, through social media, on Twitter, which make it harder and harder for the established interests to advance their causes, and it makes it much easier for the weak and the powerless to stand up for them. Why would we want to limit that? A lot of the debate at the moment is focused on Section 18C, which makes it unlawful to offend, insult, humiliate or intimidate someone on the basis of race. But that's accompanied by Section 18D, which explicitly protects 
freedom of speech. So if you do something that's artistic expression, that's scientific research, or that's fair comment or reporting on a matter of public interest, and that's actually held exempt from being in breach of 18C. Uh, and when it comes to freedom of speech, we need to understand as well that we have quite a number of restrictions on how we conduct speech in our society. So parliamentarians have standing orders which prevent them from using offensive language. We have criminal summary offence laws in most of our states and territories. We also have defamation laws which mean that you can't defame people. If we are going to talk about restrictions on free speech, we need to ensure that there's some perspective on the issue. And my view on uh, whether we should amend the Racial Discrimination Act is very clear. We need to make sure that everybody takes a degree of ownership about challenging it and responding to it and not buck passing responsibility to the courts as the current system does. We need to recognise we all have a degree of individual responsibility. As an Australian society, we need to send a strong and emphatic message about why racism is unacceptable whether it's through our personal interactions day to day, whether it's through the work that we do in our schools, our workplaces, in our communities, or whether it's through our laws and our constitution, we need to send a clear signal about racial tolerance. That's why I believe we shouldn't be changing our laws on racial vilification. 